Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Chemistry by Praveen. So today we are starting the new chapter that is called as the atomic structure. So previously we discussed the some basics concepts of chemistry. So if you are not yet watched, please go and watch. So atomic structure, atomic structures these with the constitutions of the atoms. So with the help of the atomic structure, we can study the nature, behavior and arrangement of subatomic particle. Arrangement of subatomic particle. What are the main subatomic particles? We have three subatomic particles, proton, electron and neutron. So proton having the relative charge is minus 1, plus 1, electron having the relative charge is minus 1, neutron having the relative charge is 0. So proton having the relative mass is 1, electron is 0, neutron is 1. So in this video we are going to discuss about the topic discovery of the electron. So the scientist name is called as a G.J. Stoney. He is the one the scientist. He realizes that there must be a, some fundamental unit electrically associated with the atom. So he named as a electron. So the electron was named by the scientist name is called as a G.J. Stoney. So when it comes to the discovery of the electron, discovery of the electrons with the help of the discharge tube experiment, discovery of the electron. So the discharge tube experiment was first introduced by the scientist name is called William Crookes and Julius Plucker. The two scientist names William Crookes, William Crookes and Julius Plucker. So these two scientists performed a discharge tube experiment means Conduction of the electricity through the gases was first performed by the scientist name is called William Schools and Julius Plucker. Later the scientist name is called as J.J. Thompson. He done the some experiment with the help of the experiment, the existence and the nature of the electron was confirmed. So the existence and nature of the electron was confirmed by conduction of electricity through the gases by the scientist name is called as Thompson, J.J. Thompson. He also used the discharge to experiment use. What is meant by discharge tube? What type of the setup is there? How he discovered the electrons? So it is like a one hard glass tube. So cylindrical discharge tube is a cylindrical hard glass tube about 50 centimeter long. See, it is sealed with the both the ends. With the two electrodes, that means two metal plates is present inside of the discharge tube. So these two are connected with the battery. These two are connected with the battery. So one is one end is connected with the positive terminal, one is an end is connected with the negative terminal. So the end which is connected with the negative terminal, we are calling it as a cathode, we are calling. So this one is a anode. So here Inside the gas tube, they have taken the hydrogen gas, they have taken. So to adjust the pressure, vacuum pump is there. So they use the pressure almost like 0.01 mm of Hg. They are used and the applied the high voltage, approximately 10,000 electron voltage applied, applied across the electrode level. So how uh, electrons are, uh, this means cathode rays are coming out from the cathode. So you can see that here I am taking the cathode and anode, whatever is there, that's what I am taking here. So this is anode, here it is the cathode. So inside some gas particle will be there, inside some gas particle will be there, here electron will be there, electron revolving around the nucleus. So here due to the electrostatic force of attraction, electron is attracted towards the anode and the high potential difference with the low pressure a stream of the some negative charged particles, stream of the particles are traveled towards the anode they are traveling. So these electron is attracted towards the positive plate, that means anode, this positive is attracted towards the anode. 
So if you see atom, whatever the hydrogen atom is there, hydrogen atom, they will become H plus and F one. So this electron is traveling towards the positive place. So when they are applying the low pressure and high voltage, a stream of the particle, a stream of invisible particles travels from the cathode to anode they are traveling. Like this they discover the electron. J.J. Thompson, by using this method, he discovered the electron. Now you can see the properties of the cathode rays. Cathode rays, you can see cathode rays moves from cathode to the anode. So, here it is the cathode. Here it is the anode. So, cathode rays are start moving from the cathode to the anode they are moving. Why they are moving towards the anode? We know that like charges are repelled with each other, opposite charges are attracted with each other. So, some rays are travel, start moving from the cathode to anode. This means the rays which are approaching the anode, they should have, must have the opposite charges they should have. So, here cathode rays are having the negative charge of particle. By this, you can easily confirm that cathode rays having the negative charge. So, see the second point. These rays themselves are not visible, but their behavior can be observed with the help of phosphorescent or fluorescent screen. That means these rays are a uh, very small particle, very minute particle, very minute rays. So we cannot see the particle, but we can easily observe. How we can easily observe? Once you can see the setup of the discharge tube experiment. So discharge tube experiment, discharge tube experiment, behind of the anode, the whatever the edge is there. This edge is coated with the some fluorescent or phosphorescent screen material. So the material is called as a zinc sulfide material. The edge of the discharge tube, end of the cathode is coated with the zinc sulfide, that is plasma. When these rays are traveling, when these rays are traveling towards the anode, when whenever they hit this end of the glass. Whenever these are hitting the zinc sulfate screen, some glow will come. That is called greenish color glow will come. By this greenish color glow, we can confirm that some rays are originated from the cathode and they are moved towards the anode wave now. Next one you can see, these rays travel in a straight line. So these rays are traveling in a straight line, they are traveling. How we confirm that these rays are traveling in a straight line? If you keep any material in their path, they will carry and observe the, the path of the cathode rays on the zinc sulfide screen. You can see that they catch the shadow of the, this material, they are catching the shadow of this. And they are traveling with the high speed, that high speed also approximately is equal to 10 to the power of 7 centimeter, approximately equal to the 10 to the power of 7 centimeter. So, point. They produce the heat energy when they collide with the matter. See, cathode rays, on the path of the cathode rays, if you place any matter you are placing, they are, we know that they are traveling with the high speed 10 to the power of 7 centimeters approximately. They are traveling with the high speed with a high kinetic energy. With the high kinetic energy, whenever they are traveling, in the path, if you keep one material, they collide with the material, kinetic energy will be decreases. According to the law of conservation of mass, when the energy is converted into the another form, so here heat will be raised, energy, kinetic energy is converted into another form, that is only we are calling it as a heat, converted into the heat form it is converted. Next one, they ionize the gas molecule. So, the cathode rays are passed through the gas molecule. Cathode rays are passed through the gas mo molecule. So they ionize the gas molecule. How it will be ionized? You can see that whenever if you see this is the cathode, this is the anode. Here some gas molecule will be there, here electron will be there. So cathode rays is nothing but negative charge of particles. 
these negative charged particle when they are approaching the gas molecule this electron electron will get repulsion to avoid the repulsion this electron will come out so like this they will ionize the gas molecule next one they affect the photographic plate they are affected so you can see that photographic plate when the cathode rays are passing through the cathode rays passing through the photographic plate so it will become ag and br so br will converted into br minus or br2 will convert next point the nature of the cathode rays independent this means it does not depend the nature and its behavior does not depends upon the nature of the cathode and nature of the gas taken in the discharge tube so whatever material you are taking is for the cathode and the gas whether if you are taking the hydrogen gas you are taking so it will become it will also release the same thing electron also it will release if you take the o2 of o2 also releases the electron this means Releasing of electron is compulsory done. Whether you are taking the hydrogen gas, you can take O2 gas, you can take H2 gas, you can take. So whatever material also you are taking, it does not depends upon the name. So the cathode rays nature and behavior will not at all change. Next one you can see when the cathode rays are passed through the electrical field, will they deviate towards the Positive end to the immediate. So I am establishing the one electrical field. So cathode rays are traveling towards the electrical field. When the cathode rays are approaching the electrical field, these cathode rays are slightly deviated towards the positive plane, positive end. Why? Because these are having the negative charge. That's why they are deviated towards the positive end. They are deviated. Next, you can see. How they are deviated? How their behavior? Cathode rays behavior in the magnetic field. So you can see that magnetic field, north pole and the south pole. So the map B magnetic strain moves towards the north to the south it will move, and the cathode rays with the velocity B will be there. So you can see that cathode rays. are parallel to the product of the moves towards the moves to the parallel to the product of the nu bar and the magnetic strain next one the e by m ratio e by m ratio in the sense charge to mass ratio or specific charge also does not depends upon nature of the cathode and the nature of the gas taken in the discharge tube J. J. Thomson determined the E by M ratio. E by M ratio is nothing but E stands for charge, M stands for mass. Charge to mass ratio of the electrons. This is also called as a specific charge. Who determined the specific charge? J. J. Thomson determined the specific charge. J. J. Thomson. J. J. Thomson determined the specific charge of the electrons. This value is. 1.758 into 10 to the power of 11 coulomb per kg. So Mulikan scientist he performed the Mulikan oil drop experiment that we will discuss in the next video. He determined the charge of the electron is equal to one point negative 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 by the experiment of Mulikan oil drop experiment. Mulikan oil drop experiment. So here we got the value of E by M, and the e. by using this we can easily calculate the mass of the electron. So E by M and E. So E by M value is equal one point seven five eight into ten to the power of eleven coulomb per kg. So charge is equal one point six six two ten to the power of minus nineteen coulomb. Coulomb coulomb get cancelled. If you do the simplification, you will get the answer in kg. 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kg. So 1 kg is equal to 1000 grams. You can convert it into the grams. 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 28 grams. This is the mass of the one electron in kg. Mass of one electron in the gram. This value you have to remember these values. 
So E by M ratio is equal to 1.758 into 10 to the power of 11 coulomb for kg determined by the scientist name is called as a JJ Thompson. Charge of the electron by the scientist name is called as a moving on in the oil products moment. The charge is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 90. Mass of electron value in grams. Mass of electron in gram is equal to 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 28 grams. But I want a, how will you convert it into the AMU? We know that one AMU atomic mass in it is equal to 1.66 into 10 to the power of minus 24 grams. So mass of electron mass of electron in AMU. Whenever we are doing the calculation, C by ratio maximum to simplification of the calculation, we will take the mass of the electron and proton and neutron in the AMU. So mass of electron in AMU 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 28 grams upon the 1.66 into 10 to the power of minus 24 grams. Grams gram get cancelled. We will get the answer in AMU. If you do the simplification, answer will come 0 0.000. 548 AMU atomic mass mass of the electron in AMU. So next one mass of proton or mass of electron in AMU. So mass of proton is nothing but 1.007 electron will be 0 0.000548 AMU. AMU. So we will get approximately 1837. We will get approximate value is 1837. So from radius of electron, radius of electron, radius of one electron, radius of one electron is equal to 4.28 into 10 to the power of minus 14 centimeters. We got the radius of the electron from this we can calculate the volume of the electron. So volume of electron, one electron, volume of an electron is equal to 4 by 3 by R cube. So 4 upon the 3 into 3.143 into 4.28 into 10 to the power of minus 14 centimeter. We will get the answer approximately 3.28 into 10 to the power of minus 40 centimeter cubic. So now we got the volume, we got the radius, we can calculate the density of the electron. So density is equal to mass by volume, density of the electron. So mass is how much? 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 28 grams upon the volume is equal to how much? 3.28. 28 into 10 to the power of minus 40. Wrong, this is the figure. So, density will come gram per milliliter. Density is equal to 2.58 into 10 to the power of 12 gram per milliliter. So, density of the electron. So, next video, uh, we will discuss about the discovery of the proton, molecular eye drop experiment, and the properties of the canal race we will discuss. So thank you for watching this video.